Hello, welcome to Mark Langley's Horsemanship Podcast, a podcast helping people to understand their horses better, to provide solutions in a calm, connected way. I'm Jenny Barnes. And I'm Mark Langley. This podcast talks to Mark over in America. Mark, where are you at the moment? Uh, I'm in Utah. Um, you had to think I'm then, in, didn't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm in Utah, and uh, I, I'm, I'm near a town called Logan. I, it, um, I'm just trying to think of a, a little town that I mean, I just, I just, it, it, I had it in my mind Wellsville. all day, and uh, and I've just forgot it. But yeah, Wellsville, that's it. Wellsville, Wellsville is near Logan, and actually, funny enough, Logan, uh, you uh, in Australia, I see a lot of Logan floats. And Duke goosenecks, and so that Logan is the town that, that that makes the big horse goosenecks and and all that. So, That's so where when they come I did from. the clinic, you know, a lot of people turn up turn up with Logan Logan floats. So, it's uh, where they come from. Yeah, in Logan. There you go. Okay, and you have and how's it going in America? Uh it's going really well, actually. Um, really, really enjoying it. The, the people have been very, very, um, you know, good hospitality over here, and um. And yeah, they've all been very friendly and very keen to learn. Um, where where I am up north in these northern states, well, that, it's it's funny because Utah is only uh, the state above Arizona, so it's not many states north, but it's still kind of um, you know that west that northwest sort of thing. And um, and yeah, that is, I think a lot of people found that really refreshing up here, the training, and and they they it's it's been quite different um, than what they've been doing. They've been probably saw a lot of the normal sort of you know sort of horsemanship, so they really enjoy. You know, having a fresh opportunity to try some new things because they've, they've they've felt some good responses on their horses. So it's been been really good. And um, I just walked up to the top of the mountain range today, and I think I might have saw legs tomorrow. But um, oh, uh, yeah. So that was a, so um, I I I uh, the, the trail head was about eighteen hundred meters, and and then it went to twenty nine hundred at the oh, top gosh. of the mountain, and I, I think over the nineteen kilometers up and back. And uh, so, but it was That's worth it. Huge. I, 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 Got halfway and I thought, oh, <laughs> I should turn around. But I thought, no, I want to go to the top. So, so it was, uh, yeah, it was beautiful and yeah, certainly um, different sort of mountains here. And there was a bit of snap there that was quite exciting. So, okay, this week, Mark, we're going to talk about um, helping horses who do something unexpectedly. And the first question comes from Janice. Janice has got a particular question. Um, she comes from Mexico and she has an Appaloosa there that she's recently brought out of a shutdown state. Um, but one thing that she's having issues with still is that sometimes he will just start, suddenly stop. It could be in a walk. It could be in a trot. And she just can't figure out why he's doing it. Um, he will do it coming out of a stall in the arena and outside walking in the street. Sometimes he's walking along leading very nicely. But then at another time, he will just stop in his tracks with a lot of brace in his body. So it's almost like I can imagine him just sort of plonking. Um, she's tried standing him at the end of the lead rope and asking him to come to her. She's used flags in front of him, um, asking him to come to her. And she's also lifted up his head under his chin with forward pressure to try and get him moving again. You know, these are all techniques that we've seen you use, Mark. They all seem to work eventually but only when he's really ready. So she's wondering what's the best way to try to correct the behaviour to get him, you know, um, I guess to stop it in the first place, but also to get him willing to move forward perhaps a little bit quicker. Um, this is a tough, uh, this is the hard, hard, tough part of, 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 of training. And um, um, I opened up a horse just at the clinic and it took me a few days to get her to sort of soften that I could use my legs on her um, and she would listen to them. And, and I just sort of did the lesson and she was cantering up and she was starting to be, you know, but, but she was, she, she was a, a breed of horse that really could shell up and shut out and just, and just kind of go, la, la, la. Though she was loading on the float soft and doing certain things, there's other times she'd just, just go water off the duck's back pressure, you know, and so she'd just shut out. And, and, and I, I did some specific lessons getting her to, um, to start the process, and when she came out, she was a little bit wiggly to ride. She was, you could feel as a like, like still gremlins and stuff inside her that were that were coming out, and you know she she'd not been used to processing pressure, and um and then just at the last lesson, I got her to can her up, and she was starting to can. That's the first can she's had in years, and and um and she was she was you could feel her. She was listening to the legs, but you could still tell she wasn't quite um at the the, the right end of it in, in, in softness, but then the owner got on her and within, within about two seconds, she just shelled up again. And, and, and it was really hard because I'm like, you know, it was really hard to get her out and get her open, but I know that she's starting to know 
you know, who's who and, and, and I reckon she would need another four, five, six, seven, eight good rides until she gets more of a habit of understanding I can be out here and, and be aware. Well, where I'm going with this is um, with the horses that sort of suddenly just block up. Um, so this mare, I, she, 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 that we had to get her ticking and firing on all, all cylinders and, and most horses that's the case and it's probably something in that horse you find that he's not actually, he's not, um, mobile in his thoughts. What I mean that is, is what I mean by mobile in the thoughts is you can interrupt him, you can direct his thoughts, um, and in a training environment he's very open and, and you can pick up a feel he looks there and then you can look him over there. Then when you pick up a feel in the rope to come forward, he, th- he comes forward and he's very sort of open and he processes. I think he's a horse that probably, even though he's doing certain things that are okay, I don't think he's completely mobile in his mind and firing on all cylinders in his nervous system. And um, so when you take him out, he's probably still kind of a little bit inadjustable in his thoughts in the arena or in the safe place. But then when he goes out, he can become completely uh, inadjustable, which means he goes, no, I've got a strong thought, I'm going to anchor. And I see a lot of horses, this mare does that, she just anchors, anchors with the others and goes, that's it, I'm, that's all I want to do. Um, and, and so when you're in the arena, when you're in the, in the other, the, the places that the horse is going to work better for you, look very close as if that horse is sort of blinking, thinking, breathing, ears flicking, um, and, and, and the leading, you know, get that leading really kind of, I, I don't want to say snappy in a, in a bad way. I want to say, but, but snappy in a way that the horse goes, yep, I'm coming. I'm right. Yep. I'm here and I'm backing up. And, and, and I want to see you look hard. I want, I want you to look hard at the thoughts and see if that horse is really mobile and tuning in or just kind of like 50 50 and kind of, um, you know, and, and, uh, because if that horse is in that really good, healthy mindset and you've done it through leading, when you go out, you'll be able to interrupt their thought and they won't anchor so hard. Okay. Um, um, and a little example, um, which I'll use, which might help you, the one of the other horses at this particular clinic, I was showing a young girl, because I'd ridden a horse, but a, a young girl came on to ride it, and um, she picked up the rein, and she was doing exactly the same lesson as me, but what happened was um, the horse started to quieten down and then just start to stand with its mates. And, and it was exactly the same lesson that I was doing with it to get him to open up as like a one rein start. And then I got on him and I said, no, no, we might just lift the rein up. And I just gave a little lift and the horse went blink, think. And then he followed the rein and then he went on door of the Explorer adventure around the arena searching again. And then she got on, she did the same thing. And then all of a sudden she could pick up a rein and he was searching everywhere. Um, and it was just a certain bump in the rein that made him like tick, tick, bing, bing. The whole system opened up again and away he went. And it was that just a tiny adjustment. Um, but with your horse, it might be, you know, you might have to put a bump through the rope and he goes, blink, blink, think, oh, oh right, eh? And his, his thoughts are unanchored and then lead him off. Um, but, but go back to the arena, really look at his mental mobility and then, you know, make, you know, get him leading really, really well, backing really well and do it a lot better. So he's really adjustable and he doesn't anchor anywhere and then take him out in little increments and test him and bring him back until you can go further and further. Wonderful. Okay, that, that sheds some light on that one. Next question is from Jessie. She's from Australia, and she's got a 13-year-old stock horse mare who met at Wagga. Um, she's recently started hopping in the trot. The first time she did it was at a practice competition with obstacles, and she thought she wanted to finish the course, but then she's done it a while ago. She's putting it down to maybe being confused by instruction, and then she's done it again recently. She's really not quite sure why she's doing it. Um, and Jesse, we're not really quite sure what you mean by hopping in the trot. So we're stabbing at this one in the dark a little bit um, and just going to answer it sort of um, rather briefly in case we were completely on the wrong track. You'll have to just let us know if we are. Um, but um, you've, she's obviously doing something that's not normal. It's not a normal movement in a scenario, um, one that's in competition. I'm not quite sure when the other things happened. Obviously, there was um, in an educational sense because she was confused by your instruction. Um, but um Obviously, there's, there's things happening around her. Or she's being asked to do things, and then she's doing this peculiar movement, whatever it is. Um, so any thoughts on that, Mark? 
I just got to look at the level of anxiety in it. Um, is is what, what what is what is the hopping? Obviously, it's a hopping. She's hopping up in the truck because if the other hopping that I think of is she's hopping lame. Uh, and yeah, we'd use that. Maybe she's hopping in the truck because she's lame. But um, if it's a if it's def- if it's not that, it's more of an anxiety thing. So um, it could be she's starting to destinate a little bit. She's starting to you know bind up with a bit of energy, and she's starting to kind of you know get a bit rigid through her body. So she's kind of having these little like like a horse that kind of suddenly kind of has a has a sparky fast reaction. So if it's that, then then she's um she start to you know the, everything start to get her worried, and she start to bind up, and and she's not following the field properly. So she's not trotting properly. She's just having having certain you know anxious responses which means uh, you have to go back to the training and the drawing board a little bit and work out you know how she feeling about the legs how she feeling about acceleration all the way through how she feeling about the steering and the reins uh is the environment over facing her uh does she does she hop at the trot at home so go back to home and just go put a few obstacles out and just sort of just do your just walk trot transitions at home and just find out what she's like you know if it's a body problem obviously then she's it doesn't matter where you are it's going to happen um, so, so go back home and, and work on it at home and, and just get comfortable. And so when you squeeze her, is she comfortable? Is the, are, the, are the thoughts going just as much as you want her to go? Or is she destinating when you put your legs on her and, and or, or binding up, you know? Um, at the obstacle course, um, where you're having to hold the reins a bit more and, and what she bound up, um, doing it, things like that you've got to look at. So basically, I just go back and, 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 and pull everything apart and work out what's, what's the, um, you know, does my horse go softly to the legs? Does it, does it understand the reins? Do all that at home. And if you can't find any hoppiness in her because she's going real nice at home, maybe she's starting to get really worried in those environments and you might have to maybe think about how you can take it as sort of a, a detuned environment might be, you know, like a bit of a showground with not many horses and just, Take her a few different places. It's not so intense, um, and then then work your way through that. But I, I'd say, I'd say if you went back to the drawing board, there's certain things in her that's not working quite well, and you'll find it at home. Right. So removing all of those stresses, um, you know, outside influences can sometimes just hone in on, uh, um, you know, discovering what it is that's triggering triggering it at least on one level. Mm-hmm. And then breaking it down in, in terms of what you're asking her to do, ask with your hands first, ask with your legs separately so you can really try and identify perhaps where she's not comfortable or or not understanding something. Yep. Is that right? Um, yeah. Yep. Because competition environments, competition environments can be really tough on some horses, can't they? I mean, they just, I mean, they can do it, but um, if they're doing it in a mechanical sense and they're not wanting to be there mentally, they eventually sort of in their mind go i'm i'm absolutely fried by what's going on you know like top like top yeah, sports it, people yep yeah, no well i had a horse one day at, at a clinic in mudgee and um and it was a race horse it's just one that came to my mind and you know i talk about post-traumatic stress syndrome and uh in horses because you know you hear a lot about in people and people that have been off to war um you know they might have been all right for um you know, uh, but you know, a couple of times. But you know, after four or five times, they start to to, to you know the cracks show. Um, and and yeah, so a lot of people can suffer from post traumatic stress syndrome, and I think horses most definitely do. And uh, there was a race horse one day that really resonate resonates with with post traumatic stress syndrome because uh, I was I was looking with my my eyes, uh, and I when she was riding him. In an individual lesson, she went up through the trot and I think into the canter and I was really happy with his mental state. I thought, you know, like I, I can see certain things in horses say, well, they nearly never not quite, but there's still certain anxiety, but he looked pretty calm and he was traveling pretty nice. And, um, you know, all in all, he, he was understanding her age pretty good, um, without too much trouble. And, um, I was really happy with him the next day. It just happened that there was five horses in the arena. We're doing a certain certain lesson, and he just tapped out, just tapped out completely. Um, so to make him feel better, we had to take him back up to his yard that he was um, housed in at the clinic, and just ride him gently in his yard, in his safe place, until he softened, and and just let go of all of it in his yard. But it was just the, the, just a few horses mingling around. 
and he just went off his lolly, just just really couldn't couldn't do anything to help him. Like you know, we had to take him to the most safest place and just say reset, mate. That you know, reset. It's all right. Um, you know, and I see that quite a lot. But he was a real. You know, the reason I'm sort of mentioning him is because, gee, even my radar, I thought he looked really good the day before, and I thought I reckon he could cope with a few horses. Um, but but yeah, it was it was it was such a contrast. Mm, okay. Um, next question comes from Debbie, and in Australia, she um, has been to one of your clinics recently. So she's been doing lots of work following on with her mare and she's been seeing improvement. She'd like to have a bit of a direction and what she should work on between the next clinic that she's booked on for. Um, she's got, she got two more clinics with you, um, this year, uh, one in a couple of months, one in spring. Um, and what's happening at the moment that she'd like to sort of just correct before the clinic is, is, um, her horse going off and veering off in her own direction. So at the moment she's um, under saddle, she's getting her to follow the rein and then she's putting her reins in the center, but she's finding her mare isn't going straight. And more often than not, she's leaning and going into a path of her own. Um, so she's just um, wondering if what she could be doing to sort of correct that imbalance. Yep. Um, so, so for everybody else uh, listening is, there's a there's a lesson that I do, and I think that's the one you might be doing, Debbie. Is um, l- uh, you 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 ride your horse until every direction's equal. What am I? Ne- every direction's equal. Say say if you're in an arena or yard, you you ride out, you centre the reins, and if and the horse will veer because they get a strong thought back to their mates. So you do a tight turn or a reasonably tight turn, um, and redirect them, centre the reins. And basically, every time they think away, you'll just put a turn on them until eventually, every time you centre the reins, they go in a straight line. And most horses usually get to a stage that you ride out and whatever direction on the compass you point them, you drop the reins and they'll go straight. And that means they're more centred and they don't have a magnet or an anchor in their mind. By the scenes of it, your horse has still got an anchor. Now, there's a catch. The catch is, is when you pick up the rein, it's got to make a difference. So some horses, and a lot of times at clinics I've seen people doing this same lesson, but they're picking up the rein, they're not changing the thought, nor are they changing the horse's um, emotion. So when they release the rein, the horse just went, oh, where was I? Oh, oh that's right, I'm still there. Uh, they haven't really had a proper change. So you might be doing turn, centre, turn, centre, turn, centre with your left or right rein. Centering is when you're dropping for the horse to go straight, but she keeps still, she keeps veering. Well, that means the turn is not as effective as it should be. So I will go back and look at the quality of the turn, maybe draw back in the rein so she comes back onto a hind quarter. She should look stronger, slow the turn down so she, her feet have to deliberately slow down and sink into the turn and let her off and see what she does. And I would put more emphasis on a better turn. Another thing you can do if they're veering off is, um, and you're having a bit of trouble in the turn centre, is when they veer off, you pick up two reins, you back them until you see a complete thought change. And the ears come back and the horse comes back and softens and says, I'm with you. And then you go, right, okay, now turn. And then you centre. So then basically you're saying, let go of, let go of what you're holding on to, that anchor that you're holding on to. Now let's try again. So be a bit more clear in the, in the turn. And if you have to back up before the turn to make it a real thought change, then, then do that because that'll put the, what I say, that puts the marble in the middle. So um, try that and see how you go. Fantastic. Okay, that's all of it for the questions today. I just wanted to leave with a comment um, from Taser, which is a really nice comment. Um, we, you know, we've talked about horses and their level of anxiety just in this Q&A. It comes up all the time. Um, but she's said she just wanted to let us know about an improvement that she's seen in her gelding and her overall mindset. Um, so with the reduction in his anxiety and taking naps means that his mini mare has also become more relaxed and started taking naps too. So that's all since she's been doing your techniques, Mark. So it just shows how much of an effect your training can have on a horse's mindset. Oh, that's wonderful. It's, not, it's nice to, to know training can help a horse, uh, you know, when, when they're out in the paddock doing their own thing. And I've, I've, it's great to hear stories like that, that good education and and helping horses, empowering horses can really help them when they go back out in the paddock. And, um, you know, that that is such an exciting thing to know that a little bit of work that we do 
you know, when we're with our horses, actually changes the way they are when they're out in the paddock and something with the herd and how will even herds accept them too. They're, you know, I've heard good stories about, you know, horses being accepted in the herd again after we've let, you know, tell, you know got them to let go of some freeze and different things like that. And, um, you know, it's wonderful that, you know, you're in, enriching their lives, not just when you're with them, but when you're without them too. So where, where are you off to next, Mark? You're in Utah at the moment. Where do you go after this? Uh, I'm going down south to, I think it's Virginia or Minnesota. Um, Minnesota. Uh, one of the two. It's Minnesota. You're going to Minnesota. go to Rochester. Rochester, Minnesota, yeah. So I've got a yeah, clinic down there and um, it's, I'm going to have to sort of start it off up north where it's a bit cooler. Uh, mind you, it's been hot here. Uh, you know, we've been about 32, 33 through the day. But, yeah, going down further, it's going to get a bit more hotter, a little bit more muggier. So, uh, but, you but will yeah, because certainly I'm... looking forward to it. Um, yeah, and after Minnesota, you'll be in Florida, so it'll be even warmer again. I imagine it's just a little bit further south again. Yeah, I was in Florida 20-odd years ago, and I was only there for the winter time, and you had nice warm days and cool nights, but I could imagine that it'd be hot because <laughs> we're looking on the map. It's, wow. Yeah, it's quite close to the equator. So certainly looking forward to it. And it's not only the States that get to uh, enjoy your amazing teaching. You're off to New Zealand as well in January next year. All right, well, thank you so much yeah. for um, your time again, Mark, and thanks to all the questions that have come through. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks, everybody. You've been listening to Australia's very own Mark Langley, a horseman with many insights from his decades of dabbling. Jump online to keep learning. marklangley.com.au